My name is Dennis Notedraft. I'm the curator here at the Fashion and Textile Museum in London. Questions, running my emotions. Lessons, shaping my devotion. Our exhibition is Knitwear, Chanel to Westwood, and really starts with the, um, Coco Chanel, whose work was revolutionary, working with knitted fabrics, woolen jerseys, which at the time were men's underwear fabrics, so not couture. And also Vivian Westwood, of course, who was a revolutionary in terms of what knitwear could do. Well, we actually had this exhibition scheduled um, it's about five years ago, and then we shelved it for a while. We had to change our exhibition program around, and then it came online about three years ago again. So it's kind of been in discussion for five years, back and forth. This is one collection, and that's how it came about. We know the collectors, it's a private collection, and everything here they own and they just happened to have a passion for knitwear. So that's the genesis of this particular exhibition, was working with one collection. Vivian Westwood always talks about Chanel and her use of kind of the body underneath as kind of the framework. Um, you know, she wasn't trying to shape the body, she was setting the body free. And Vivian Westwood um, also looks at the body in unique ways and how clothing and fabric react to that. So she does talk about Chanel as an influence. The thing that I think so good about looking at clothing as an object is that sense of social history you can get. And I love looking at paintings, but we all relate to clothing. And I think knitwear has been particularly nice as well because we all have a favorite jumper. So it's that emotional connection we have to clothing that you don't necessarily get with a sculpture or a painting. And it really reflects social history. You know, particularly how normal people lived, you know, when you look at knitwear. Because a lot of the pieces in this show were made by people just knitted anonymously, just at home. So I love that idea that you can see fashion and social history going along together. I think the 1930s were very glamorous. I think out of all the decades, I do find the 1930s quite chic. Um, I think it would have been a tough decade if you weren't very thin because it, <laughs> it wasn't that forgiving, um, but they looked great. The 1950s are also quite interesting, because I think it's a really retrograde era. So all of the strides that women had made during the war and building things and you know making bombs and getting out and working all goes away, and the next thing, you know, particularly in America, they were all back to being housewives and baking cakes and wearing high heels in the kitchen. And, but I like that. I think it's quite interesting, that idea that it just all reverts back to this kind of retrogressive stance for women. I think there was a lot more, I don't want to say there was more freedom, because in some ways there wouldn't have been, but I think there was also skills that maybe we've lost actually making your own things, putting things together. I think knitting particularly everybody knitted, everybody's mother were knitting them outfits. So I think that idea that you can just make things for yourself is hopefully coming back, but was gone for a while, so. Thank you.
Our building was designed by the Mexican architect Ricardo Legareta. This is his only building in Europe. He's very famous in Mexico and North America. It's very colorful, um, quite bright colors, bold, clean lines. So you'll notice our building is basically a box. Our upcoming exhibition is Riviera Style. That's our summer show, um, which is going to be very exciting. And that's looking at the history of swimwear, resort wear, beach wear, starting about 1900 and coming up to the very present day with the most recent developments in swimwear technology. That should be very exciting. And our next show is Thea Porter. And Thea Porter was a designer who grew up in Syria and Beirut and came to London and started designing uh, mainly interiors and then moved into fashion but was really responsible for that rich hippie look that's quite trendy now actually but she was doing that in the late 60s and through the 70s um, they were couture and she dressed all the big stars Liz Taylor, Barbara Streisand and they all wore Thea Porter clothes.